All right, and in studio with us is education expert uh, Jonathan Wesai. Just put a bit more context into this. It seems to be a reprieve there um, in terms of uh, higher learning. What do you make of this new directive? Yeah, Michelle, I think it is a reprieve to many parents. And um, I sat in a classroom with people who had uh, experience when I was training as a teacher. I had people who had served as uh, deputy principals. Others were principals. Others had over 10 years experience. Mm -hmm. But I had to sit with them from uh, first year to fourth year for them to obtain a degree. But I think this is uh, something that is noble. It is something that was in Kenya. It happened uh, slightly after independence. If you look at nearly all the faculties, especially of education in Kenya, most of the professors literally started as primary school right, teachers. Right. But they managed to grow because the system allowed. But we dropped the, the ball somewhere and started stifling people. This is the right thing. It is something that we need to invest in. We take the politics out of it and develop a framework, have competent people sitting on it so that they chart the way forward for this country. Because we have seen uh, cases where children have studied in a Kenyan university for four years. Then they are told that you cannot graduate because the professional body, especially engineering or uh, 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 certified uh, accountants, mm -hmm. do not recognize what you studied in that university. Right. So we had parallel systems literally uh, akin to cartels managing um, who gets in and who gets out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But with the national qualifications framework, then we stand a better chance for literally marking the track. It, and it is something so basic. Uh, we are a country known for athletics. When our athletes get onto the track, they don't listen to any other person because they can read the track. And the track is telling them, you, have, you must go through this number of signposts mm -hmm. for you to have finished your race. That has been lacking in our education system, and it's a, it's a welcome move by uh, the Ministry of Education. Right. I, I remember speaking to Shadrach Miti there, and he also brings in the fact that uh, some of the things this will solve, other than that hassle of uh, you know, transferring credits, is the issue of being able to track one's qualifications all the way from the beginning of education uh, in primary school all the way to the uh, university level. Are these new rules likely to also tame issues of um, uh, presenting fake documentation to access admission into higher learning institutions as well? Yeah, towards um, the end of last year, when the cabinet secretary was releasing the KCPE results, he mentioned about um, the ministry beginning a move in which there would be what they are referring to as a unique identifier. Mm -hmm. So that once you get to what we call nursery school, mm -hmm. you have a unique identifier that you'll be able to move with until university. So it will be very easy to check. If Michelle says she studied her PhD from Nairobi University, mm -hmm. it, you are able to check Nairobi University, Michelle, and the Michelle who went to standard group. Is it the same person? Right. Uh, so it is going to eliminate a lot of uh, the confusion that we've had and uh, the issues where uh, people are forging papers and obtaining jobs. People are forging papers to run for political office. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's going to give us an opportunity to sanitize and introduce a little bit of hygiene in the education system. All right, and speaking yeah. of that, uh, University of Nairobi has uh, deregistered Meru Senator Mithika Linturi for presenting fake papers to obtain a degree certificate. He is a senator of Meru County, having been elected on the 8th of August 2017 as a second senator of the county. Previously, he was the member of parliament for Igembe South in Meru County. Linturi is just one of the many casualties to face the wrath of the Commission for University Education, which is implementing tough measures of Client by the Ministry of Education through the Cabinet Secretary, Fred Matiangi, who is streamlining the education sector. All right, so that is uh, part of our discussion this afternoon. So Mithika Linturi is one of the politicians uh, who's uh, fallen, I don't know if I can say fallen victim uh, to this, uh, but uh, found himself in this situation. Again, a lot of questions are being asked here um, with regard to verifying information because the University of Nairobi, this man uh, was member of parliament before he became senator. Uh, he presented the very same degree certificate, but he used fake qualifications to access the University of Nairobi. It is not an isolated case. What leads to these issues and how can we solve that? It is lethargy in the system. Uh, the, the, the people 
in this country, I think what we need to do is to redefine the concept of corruption. Mm -hmm. Because um, withdrawing Mythical Inturi's uh, certificate now, uh, the only consequence may be that he loses his Senate seat. But we need to go beyond that. He used fake papers to benefit from taxpayers' money over the years. Mm -hmm. How are we going to recoup that investment? How does he pay for that? We need also to go to Commission of Higher Education. Who are these people who are sitting there who gave him a clearance for him to run, and why were they paid a salary to do a shoddy job? Right. Because there are people who literally find it difficult to make you know, their ends meet because of their tax obligations mm -hmm. to the government. Mm -hmm. So when that tax is put to such use, then it means the officer who was in charge also needs to pay. So it is an issue that we should not just focus on uh, the honorable uh, member only, but we also need to look at who are the people behind the curtain who are cooking all this because somebody must be held to account and when you hold public office, you need to do your job. Mm -hmm. That and, should be the bottom and, line. And that being said, uh, when education, CS Red Boy came into the uh, ministry, he revealed quite a lot of things, including the cartels uh, within the education sector. It's not just in primary school or within the secondary level. Tertiary institutions also have these cartels running them. And uh, one of the issues that they facilitate is this, uh, you know, fake, uh, using fake uh, qualifications uh, for entry into universities. But doesn't accountability begin at the university? University level shouldn't the University of Nairobi have been able to verify that information uh, before passing it over to the uh, Commission for Education? Yeah, and, and, and you know the, the the confusion, you know the lack of uh, such body as what the the, the, the ministry is proposing now and a national qualifications framework uh, that sits in a commission that makes sure that what is said and shared with the public in terms of individual qualification. Uh, there is a thread running to individual learning institutions. Mm -hmm. The lack of such a thread is what has been throwing us into confusion. That is why many of these politicians have been running around with court cases. And uh, in Kenya now, I think we are among the leading countries in the world where somebody can quickly obtain a court injunction you know, to stay the matter, you know, don't interfere with me. With that, I, I, because yes, I remember in parliament. Linturi yes. did the same thing. I remember yes. that uh, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission had forwarded um, a list of about 106 politicians yeah. to the IBC saying these people have issues with their integrity. But he moved to court, very quickly got an injunction, and here he is now as a senator. Do you think that the, the, the court process perhaps also sometimes interferes with this? You, you know, everybody, you know, every citizen in Kenya has uh, the right uh, within the constitution and uh, is their civil liberty to move to court to protect their right. But what we need to do is also as Kenyans to follow up on our narrative. Mm -hmm. We are not doing a good job in um, you know, reporting and analyzing and following up on this matter. Right. I can tell you that uh, by next week, we would have moved from uh, Mythical Inturi. We will be talking about something totally different mm -hmm. and nobody will go back to check on what is happening on the matter. Uh, until uh, when, if he does not run to court again to, to obtain a stay order, uh, maybe he loses his seat and there's a by-election. We will participate in the by-election for a few days, then forget it. But we need to start weaving a narrative as a country where we are able to talk about a start point with an end point in mind, but also tell the story in between. What are the issues that are happening in between? We do not have um, what I'll call intermediate storytelling, mm -hmm. um, you know, in uh, an investigative perspective. We only talk about, um, uh, uh, let me use the example of uh, the late Honorable Njenga Karume, that uh, may his soul rest in peace, that I was selling uh, charcoal but then I'm a multimillionaire, mm -hmm. uh, and I own this property. Nobody tells you, you know, the, the, the grain of the story. The you know, other. yes. How how can a sack of charcoal get you a multi-million building? Mm -hmm. how, how did you get there? So we need to go back, reorient ourselves, and that will begin by us introducing what then I refer to as hygiene in the education system, mm -hmm. so that we know everybody 
from this cohort, everybody is clean. And you are coming out from a sector and you have clean hands, then you can also offer justice, prescribe justice for others. All right, finally, yep. very briefly, are we on the right track in streamlining our education sector? We're hearing a um, 100% transition rate from primary to secondary school. Uh, do we have the same from secondary school to institutions of higher learning as well? We are faltering, and we are faltering in uh, lack of long-term planning because the free primary education started as a political declaration by the NAC government in 2003, mm -hmm. and um, it was announced the tail end of 2002, mm -hmm. and it, it was implemented in January 2003. So the system had not planned and allocated resources for it. That is what we are doing now with the declaration for free secondary education. In the tail end of 2017, we are saying 2018 is the time mm -hmm. we are going to begin. Now, we have not prepared the intermediate colleges, the middle-level colleges and the universities to also take up more. But where we have a problem as a country is in our desire to massify university education. We have too many graduates, some of whom uh, are akin to these children who cannot read and write. Mm -hmm. So these graduates, you know, in a normal uh, distribution of any education system, a graduate is supposed to supervise up to 12 to 15 people mm -hmm. who have a lower skill, a technical skill. So it means if you have a degree, you need people with diploma and certificates under you so that they are doing the, the handwork to make you anchor your news. Mm -hmm. But in Kenya, we have a situation where people are applying for internship, people are uh, applying to literally prepare tea, but they have degrees and because masters. what they want is just to be placed to be associated. Mm -hmm. We need to get to a point where we stop laying emphasis on an examination grade and a paper. We look at what is the value of taking you to school. Can you do four things? Can you communicate effectively? Can you think critically? Can you communicate? Can you collaborate? Yes. Can you exist within a community? Are you a useful member of community? Because we have people who've studied. They have very... Great very good grades, right. very great qualifications, mm -hmm. but socially they cannot belong. All right. They cannot All right. sit down and have a conversation so with you. So it is a conversation that will yeah. continue at a later date, but many thanks for joining us for this analysis. That Thank is you. Jonathan Messiah, who is an education expert on KT News Desk. I want to take a short commercial break, but do stay with us. Sports news and so much more still to come.